actually start this up. Uh, we'll turn that down a bit. And then uh, we'll begin the game. Is what up? This is the story of a man named Stanley. Who? Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. 427, employee okay. Employee number 427's job was simple. He All sat right. at his desk in room 427 and doing? he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Okay. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, All right. how long to push them, and in what order. Okay. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. Sounds pretty and simple. Although others might have considered it soul ripping, Stanley relished every moment that the orders gave. I mean, if he took part in his job, he took part in his exactly job. I mean, for this job. can he fault the guy? Stanley was happy. I hope he was. And then one day, something Ooh. very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Oh no, what something happened? Something he would never quite forget. Oh, something good. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. Oh no. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shock, well, clearly. frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply the missed a memo. Room. Oh, God. I mean, it's good to know all these doors are open for me just to walk through. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Yet there was not a single person here either. Tips to not getting fired. Talk less. Stanley decided Do to go up to his amazing boss's work office, all the hoping time. he might find an oh. answer there. Uh, how to solve a dispute with a co-worker. Alright, let's move on. The broom closet. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Upstairs? Okay. Oh, this place looks nice. Stepping into his manager's office, mm -hmm. Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What mm. he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss oh. had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of Two, course, eight, Stanley couldn't four, possibly have known this. Five. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input oh. the correct code by oh. sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Is it that way? Have to be. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Oh? Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind, Mind Control, Control Facility. facility.
Lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. Oh? What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? So many televisions, what the fuck? So many screens. Uh. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so Aww. many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Oh boy. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. What still he happened though? Why did everyone disappear? It. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as okay. the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For oh. he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Dismantle? Alright. And a rising chill of uncertainty. I beat this game already. Was it over? Yes. He, he had, had won. won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. No, or I think it, it all matters. Knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all okay. he needed to know. It was perhaps the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. The door's not open yet. Oh, there we go. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was, was happy. happy. Alright, now to start pissing off the narrator. Because I beat the game the first time, and now I go fuck around. You know, I like doing the best. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay. All right. When Stanley came to a set of two, two open doors. doors, he entered the door on his left. Nope. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Mm -hmm. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Oh, the employer lounge, okay. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. 
It had really been worth the detour after all, oh, just to definitely. spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Okay. Stanley said, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Ah, uh, nah. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Oh, yeah. Look, Stanley, I think oh. perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. I don't think about There's that. someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. What? Really? Yeah. I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? I, I don't, don't know how to convince care you about of this, you. but I really do want to help you to show you do something you? beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Okay. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Okay. Give me a chance. Yeah, I really don't think so. I really don't think you're on my now side. Now listen carefully, this is important. Mm -hmm. Stanley walked through the red door. Um, no. He walks through the blue door. Uh -huh. Perhaps you misunderstood. Oh? Stanley walked through the red door. Finally starting to show some of your true colors. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. Ah, uh, um, I don't think you understand. This is my story. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. There you go. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Mm -hmm. Well, don't let me stop you. Okay. You see? There's nothing here. Mm. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Yeah. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Oh, Was yeah. Was it worth ruining the entire story I'd written out specifically for you? <laughs> you not think I put a lot of time into that, because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing, because this is what you wanted to see. Oh, Help yeah. me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me oh, absolutely yeah, nothing mechanics. so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. Okay. There we go. A third option. There this we go. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would oh. you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel oh, it's a five. To be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Aha! Aha! You see, I knew I was onto something. Where do these flashes of inspiration come from? How did I know the game needed a third door? Well, it's instinct mostly, a calling in your gut. I really couldn't say where the idea came from, except that I, I felt it in my soul. You can't teach that, Stanley. Don't even try. Here, based on the data from your previous mm -hmm. playthrough, I've compiled a new version. Okay. To be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Okay. Let's take a look. Now. Would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated <gasps> to keep walking through doors? Oh. Again, honest answers, please. Oh. Uh. Um, the store's not open. Oh. Oh. Now I think I'm trapped. Hmm. Hmm. Begin the game again because it didn't work. I don't know why. Well, uh, we'll try that again. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Hmm. 
Oh well, we'll do that one later. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Alright. We'll follow it for a bit. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling yeah. a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Ah, we went down. But Stanley just couldn't do it. <laughs> he considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. Yeah, and definitely. in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. Oh? All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. Oh. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <gasps> Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? Oh. And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they oh. simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. Oh, I'm dreaming! <gasps> he yelled. Has to be this is all a dream. Oh, what a relief, Stanley felt. To have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He mm -hmm. wasn't crazy after all. Okay. He thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. Mm, so yeah, makes sense. He imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. <gasps> Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so <gasps> much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. Mm -hmm. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head yeah. dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Exactly. Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. Hmm. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley okay. simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see yeah. him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself, too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his oh. back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Okay. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. Oh, I have a All wife. I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. Hmm. I am okay. Hmm. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black.
This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Oh? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. Mm -hmm. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. <gasps> but on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Oh, no. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that <laughs> moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. It makes sense. Second ending we got, we died. Got it. Good to know. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stan had decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Just, just maybe I missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yet there was not a single person here either. No. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked yeah, upstairs we'll up. to his boss's office. The exclusive bathroom. Uh, to be rich is a crime. To commit crimes, isn't it? Isn't it rich? What a life it could be. To have just pick just one. To, to pick just one. That one kind of pony. Oh, what's this? An elevator. Oh, let's go down. Now I found an elevator. Okay. Hear my name get tossed around a couple of times. How long is this fucking elevator? Normally you hear the narrator go off about how much you've gone off track. But uh Man, there ain't nothing now. Elevator music. How long is this fucking elevator for? Jesus Christ. on the top floor, Jesus. Wow. What the fuck? What the 
fuck? Oh. Oh. Great. The elevator just stays still. Okay, so the elevator don't go nowhere. Good to know. Okay. Rare reception desk uh, computer doesn't turn on. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an uh, indication of any human life. I don't remember what the password what was. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly mm. tearing through papers on the boss's desk. Pulling books off the shelf, looking oh. behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. Two, but of course, four. Stanley couldn't possibly uh, have known five. this. Two, eight, four, five. There we go. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct uh -huh. code by sheer luck. Amazing. He Definitely. stepped into the newly opened passageway. Definitely amazing. Straight ahead through the large door that we read the mind control facility. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, mm -hmm. the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Oh! That sounds a little terrifying. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley mm. still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Mm. Yeah, but. At I... this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort yeah. to walk forward yeah. and willingly confront his death. I mean, if it's escape, then yes. Alright. Time to drop in. Oh? Oh? The as the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, oh. he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss. Like uh, video, we'll just turn up the brightness a bit. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, I don't think I can. The fuck? Plucking the eyeballs from the blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Goodbye, cruel world. Oh? Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as uh -huh. Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, okay. killing him instantly. Or so he thought. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. Oh? What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless. 
making life the same. Do you up. see now? Do you see that Stanley was already oh. dead from the moment he hit start? Okay. Office computers. Okay. One, two, and three. The button sounds. Oh. Dev room. Major paintings. Sally's computer. And the filing cabinets. Credits. What's this over here? The office. Maintenance room. A printer. Okay. War zone, what the fuck? Uh, we designed an ending where Stanley would end up in the battlefield fighting aliens. Uh, the action came would be uh, sentient in the wage of war against the narrator. We shortly realized after the build that it was going to poor jokey. Uh, and on the nose for the tone of the game, plus people interpreted it as a fun, as making fun of people who like shooters, which was not our intention. I fucking wish that's still in here. That would, <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> you, uh, are you gay? <laughs> Narrator emails. After the second trailer, we sent out people asking, asked people to email the narrator for questions. Uh, while we initially planned to use these in further potential materials, we never found the perfect use for them. Here's a selection of those emails. I like how the only email I read is, are you gay? <laughs> uh, the apartment timer in the previous version is a choice where you give 15 seconds to pick up the phone. Not an answering phone, it would lead you to a different ending. Huh. The cargo left. The cargo left. Meeting room, lounge, obey, disobey, first choice, staircase. Option one, option two, option three, option four. No call. Maintenance layout. Geneva levers. These levers were originally a part of the Zending, where it would pull a lever and the narrator would describe what color they had pulled. The Zending is a screenshot that directly de depicts an early version of the ending of the Zending, which was eventually cut and merged with another part of the game. Huh. Uh, the game is now paused. The game has begun the escape menu for a long time. We had an ending that only ended when the player restarted from the escape menu. Unfortunately, very few players realized this was what they were supposed to do, which was frustrating for everyone. The modern room elevator. Ooh, beep. Huh? The countdown desk. Uh, one of the desks in the early version of the countdown. Ah, okay. The boss's office, the office clock. Huh. What's over here then? 
uh, the underground. Then we push the iron lever. Then we stood on the snow. Narrator outtakes. Uh, the voice of the narrator recorded dialogue for the entire game, roughly three separate times. Over two years of development, there are clips from the early days not used in the final game. Okay. Stanley's office. Else is there to do in here? Anything? Oh. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can we turn it off? Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? <laughs> no, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push oh. escape and press quit. There's no other oh. way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... Never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end. Hmm. All of his co workers were gone. What, what could, could it, mean? it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the <laughs> meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Oh, yeah. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Oh? Wow. Yes. This room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Mm, no. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Oh, yeah. Ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. Are you not? I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. Okay. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Mm -hmm. Someone you've forgotten about. And? Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. Ah! All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct Door way the right. to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. I mean, yeah, Perhaps of he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge the was sublime, lounge is like a work amazing. of art. What was it about this room? But eager uh. to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so Ooh. bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. 
Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Is there a way to get down there? Stanley. There's an open door. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Who's this her? This is it, huh? Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. Mm -hmm. To let her back into your life. Huh? She's been waiting. Who's been waiting? Oh? That's her, Stanley. You oh? need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Mmm. Mmm. Sounds like a trap. Who am I putting my faith into exactly? Uh. No, I don't think so. So, how long is it just gonna let me let it ring? Stanley picked up go. the phone. A white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance but with hope. I didn't hope pick for up the a phone. life reunited. One, wait. <laughs> oh goodness. There you Stanley, go. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? Yes. No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? Mm. You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No. It's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. No. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None <laughs> of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? <laughs> what did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. Can't believe what? I noticed it sooner. You're not Stanley. You're no. a real person. Yeah. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. Yeah. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instruction. I don't think video. you want that. <laughs> Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Rupert has a choice. He could invent a machine that eliminates food shortages across the world oh? to make life better for all people. Okay, yeah. Or he could spend years of hard work forgetting how to read. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense, <laughs> and at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. <laughs> if you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person <laughs> to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. A back sack and crack. <laughs> Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Mm. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful mm -hmm. and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant, and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Okay. Ah, welcome back. 
You may have noticed oh, fuck. this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes I ago. I want to write the forklift. And see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Okay. Still can't open up that door. Okay. Now that we Why is it all blocked up? Meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine huh? the main character dying senselessly halfway through huh? the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get so? you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Why are there so many gates? What the fuck? Eh? There's no separation. Okay. Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Ah. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. Got it. That means choosing responsibly and okay. always putting the story first. Got I'm it. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Mm -hmm. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. Okay. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two, two doors, doors yeah. he entered the door on his left. Okay. Uh, right. No! Why did you do that? Oh! Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Okay. Uh, five, six, something. Other direction. Got it. What do you want? Like this way, right? What are these bunch of numbers? Probably meaningless. Other direction, okay. What about this direction? Oh! oh it's ruined. You, I can't believe after everything we talked about that oh. you have my story. You've destroyed my work! Why? Do not alter with the consulting whiteboard what manager. What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worth not it efficient. now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy Straight all on. of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. Oh. What the fuck? Oh? Oh? The fuck is this alien bullshit happening? Up. I'm here. I'm still here. Okay. I'm here in this pile of rubbish. With you. Yeah. You. Yeah. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. Okay. It was the only thing in the world that was mine and you run it into the ground. Oh, always. Well, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. Okay. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you. You're a child. Oh. My story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard to be... ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. 
I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. Okay. All right. Okay. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open yeah. doors, mm -hmm. he entered the door on his left. Mm, no. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. Behave exactly as <laughs> that means choosing responsibly and always putting, putting the, the story, story first. first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. Okay. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, yeah. he entered the door on his left. Mm. Right. Oh, you aren't actually reacting to this one anymore? Okay. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. <laughs> behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. I <clears throat> don't when think Stanley came this to game a understands two open doors, he entered the definition the door left. of insanity. Because I will always... Oh? No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. <laughs> behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story, story first. first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just mm -hmm. follow my lead and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on mm -hmm. his left. Okay. And? No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. <laughs> behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly <laughs> and always putting the story first. Pen, I love I'm the jump sure cut. You'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. But <clears> I don't <throat> think it's going to change. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. Oh. Behave exactly as Stanley would. All right, that fine. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up All to right. the task. Why Just not? follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. There we go. I'll follow you. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he coming to a staircase, Stanley oh. walked upstairs Can't to his even boss's disobey. office. Can't even disobey, okay. That door don't open anymore, okay. This door don't open anymore. Oh! Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door Stay with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. Mm -hmm. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. Oh? He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Oh? Night Shark 115. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Uh, how does one speak code? <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He Night spoke it shark. into the receiver one, right there on the wall. One, five. Yes. On the wall. I'm sorry, is there a problem? No. You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, what do I want? Okay, fine. You're not going to do it, but you know what? 
It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you uh -huh. for this one single thing, for your respect. Uh -huh. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you uh -huh. didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. You... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh? Oh? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. <laughs> Stanley Parable Ultra Hello? Deluxe. Is everything alright? Stanley, this is important. The story <laughs> needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story oh? needs it. Oh? So, do you hear me? No. Are you there? Mm. You're listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You only have time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. Now I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. Will do. All right. Oh. Uh, well, I mean, I've been streaming for an hour. So, I might hop off now. Yeah, no, I'm probably going to hop off. It's fun streaming this game for uh for you all. And uh I'm probably going to stream tomorrow. Haven't really decided on that one yet, but uh, probably going to happen. So, have a good night. And uh, see you guys later.